Welcome back to the workshop lads. Today we have a Bosch grinder on for a pair. This is the GWS 7 stroke 115. One of my favourite grinders. Problem with it. On off switch. We slide switch for starting and stopping the machine. Got a drop or a bang. So he's broken off the switch. It's quite a simple repair. But it's a bit of a torture. Sadly. It's not just a case of pushing this in here. That'll just put it onto the plastic housing. This also has to click into this lever underneath. And that lever is just floating there. So if you push it in, it's just going to move out of the way. And it's not going to engage. So we have to put this on and push that lever onto this from the inside. Which means you have to strip it down. A lot of work for a tiny piece. Pull the motor out of this. Also want to disengage the brushes. Because of the wee dust shield ring on the end of the armature, that will snag on the brush. Pull it too hard, you'll end up breaking the brushes. Head can come off. Pull out your motor. Pull off the dust shield. This is your wee lever here. Right, it goes through this hole, which also goes onto this arm underneath. So you have to push it under the two of these. That bit's easy. This is the awkward bit. Click it in. That's you. Everything else is perfect with this grinder because it is actually brand new. And dropped it after a few days and broke that off. Install your brushes. That should be her. There we go. One Bosch four and a half inch GWS seven stroke one one five grinder with a new on off switch. Nice one. Here's one a little different set of animal shears. These are a clip star. These aren't exactly sheep shears. They're not really so much for shearing wool. More for debunging cattle. Nowhere else for show animals for tidying them up. Taking the dung off the rear end basically. This one. Not good on side anyway. Sounds like there's a strip gear. These heads as well. Not on right, rusted. It's actually not too dirty, but it's definitely seen better days. It's 
not even over tightened or nothing. Just want to have to see what's going on here. Very simple devices these. I'm always amazed at the price some of these can be. That's the head. That's the motor. So that's okay. As for the head, there's your problem. Strip nylon gear. Right, Let's see if we can get one of these and replace the cutters as well because these are obviously badly corroded, they're rusted, some of them are broke. If these aren't sharp enough, they're not going to be cutting the hair properly. It has to be over tightened then for it to cut. Tear you like this, more likely they are to strip out the gear, replace the gear, replace the, the comb and the blade. See, this is on here. I also just tied it up a wee bit. blunt they're not going to be cutting anything this hair is not even on right broken teeth might be one or two of them we got crooked as well Apart from that, don't need to take anything else apart. Bearing inside should be fine. Just remove this gear. This is just held in by one little ring spring. Take that out. Gear pops off. Head's fine. Batteries are fine. Battery terminals are fine, not corroded. Decent battery in it as well. Two amp. Leave that bit. Clean this out. Now, that's them all cleaned up and ready to go. Nice and spotless. These actually forks for holding your blades. These actually twist. Three springs down here. Put them under tension. And give them a wee touch of oil. Get you there, lubed. This ball down in here. I prefer to use heavy grease in these. Sticks around a lot better. If you use oil, it generally just tends to run away. Get that pressed on there. And the same up here. This pin for putting pressure sits on a ball in this cap. Make sure that's got grease in it. Just make sure the outside's lubed as well. Just the back of that. You don't need to oil the threads. That's the head. Now for the replacements. Set of blades, one gear. Now, these are looking for spare parts for animal clippers or these cow clippers or even clippers themselves. Check out clippersireland.ie. This is where I actually get this stuff from. So if you need spares, check them out. It's 
a new comb, a new blade. Blades, two small holes here under these two spikes. Because these are on springs, you have to actually press them on. That should hold. Should be properly located on here. These wee spikes don't go into them holes. It's the wrong size blade for the clippers. Sure they're pressed down. Make sure they're flat against the bottom. Can adjust them to suit, give the right clearance for the cutting height. Now, when you have this all together, sitting down flat, and you're happy with your blade. Then you can adjust your comb at the back. As you can see, there's actually two slots. You can move the comb up and down. Or if you want the cotton tooth to be just below this flat edge here, this cotton surface. Bring them forward again. So I'm going to need it to be about maybe one or two mil away from the edge approximately there if you haven't too far forward it's a tip up here it isn't actually engaging anything so you can get your fingernail underneath that means that cotton area there is actually just going to be tearing the hairs it's going to bend them over and tearing them give you a bad clip and it'll be uncomfortable for the animal you haven't too far forward we're losing a surface area as well so it's still not going to clip as well but one two mil back from the edge of that comb so we're right about there and also make sure it's square the bottom you don't want this sitting at an angle you don't want side closer than the other Once you're happy, go ahead and start tightening up a wee bit. Just check again. That looks okay. Keep them good and tight. And that should be your cotton head set. So, set them right and you'll get the best cut. Actual gear. It's as simple as just dropping it on. That's it. Just another wee touch of grease on that. It's my nylon gear. Still want some lube on it. You don't need too much. Now, as for the motor itself, it didn't actually wash it out. It's still clean enough. There's not much point in opening it. The only thing I did do was wash out in here. Give it a wee clean and blow it out of the compressor. Make sure there's no bits of the old nylon gear left inside. 
that could cause some sort of damage. So that's cleaned out. Also don't want to put a bit of grease on that gear. Not much. You just take very, very little. Careful not to cross thread these screws. That's her. One set of Clipstar cow clippers. The new nylon gear and a new blade set. As basic as these tools are, they're sure as hell are not cheap to buy. Even a basic set can cost up to about 200 euro. These clipster ones can cost you anywhere from 250 to 300 euro. So they're not a cheap tool to be buying. So you, to keep them good, you want to just care for them a wee bit. Keep an eye on your blades, make sure they're set up right. Don't be letting them get too rusted. Use a bit of liquid oil on them as well, keep them lubricated. And if they are cutting badly, don't just keep tightening the blade set up. You can get these sharpened up, and if not, you can buy replacement blades for it. The sharper the cutter, the easier it is on the tool. This is the second fix Dewalt. What's the problem? Broken pan. If you hit a nail or a screw head when firing these guns or hit a bit of concrete, you're at risk of snapping a pin. How to fix Slacken these screws, just a half a turn is all you need. Pull out this pin, and you can take these wires out, pull this plate off. Now you can access your pin, and inside is your springs. Also just check, make sure your springs are okay. That's that bit. That's the damage. One broken drive pin. Now, I'll show you how to change it. There's the pin, there's a wee wedge holding the pin in. All you need to do is get a flat screwdriver and straighten this little wedge. That wedge comes out pin will then fall out. So not just any pins are going to fit, you have to put on the right length of pin for this gun. Stick in the model number and the Google and that'll show you plenty of suppliers selling these pins. Cost about 20 or 25 euro. Or you can just search for that number there. N56 Three six one zero. Oh. Now, the problem with this one. This is actually a Type One gun, one of the originals. And this pin is actually different. It 
same length and everything back here actually narrower so the newer pins now have a wider section here I'm not sure if you still get this original one I think from memory this is the one you now get this does not fit this driver but for this gun it's not a problem anyway because the driver itself is actually worn out you can see here the flywheel has been digging in this eventually wears away just as the gun's running every time it shoots the nail digs in here to get traction to throw this driver forward this one is now worn all the way down to here and you can see down in this valley in the middle you can see two shiny spots flywheels now starting to bottom out on the bottom of here so whenever this drops onto the motor the flywheel that gets traction and gets thrown but once it wears on so much it bottoms out here so the top of the motor the flywheel actually starts touching this so these so these tracks don't get enough tension if you're shooting your gun and it's just clicking instead of shooting more than likely one with this driver it's starting to wear out you can actually see how much is worn on there so to fix this one we're going to replace the whole driver unit instead of just the pin it's going to be a waste of money just putting a new pin into this anyway that's not going to last much longer so a new driver this number here n690269 and it comes with the pin already that comes with the pin already attached same driver just with a newer type blade profile everything else is the same so we get longer life out of this than just replacing the pin on that one and this is actually a service part anyway so once the gun does so much work this part will eventually need to be replaced so lift up this axis assembly so you can see what you're doing drop this in line up the rods inside and the springs feed them through a little bit then put your pin into to feed your pin to the center hole here you might have to feel it around a wee bit to get the center to locate it onto the hole but you will see it coming out here and get it on fully push down your nail guide push it on and you can hold the driver with your finger put this back cover back into place it should click down into place then you can reinstall your screws Axis on top, still flapping about. Put your pin in again. Just push that o ring to keep it tight. Tighten up these last two screws. Now, if this wheel lever and spring happens to drop out on you, don't panic. It's just out of here. This is actually. The release this is the blade release in case your pin jams. Simply put your spring there and drop the lever it out on top of it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, just 
getting this out. That's better. Everything else simply drops into place. Put your battery retainer on. These lighter wires tucked on along the side. There's your springs. For your mode selection. And just slide down in there. And the mode button for the narrow side and a wide side narrow one faces down seven place just make sure none of the wires are not snagging anything you don't want to catch and up anyway and that's it Nice and simple, easy to change. Now, once we're back together, test that in a second. If this was a pin only replacement, you're only changing the pin and keeping this driver, just to demonstrate this for you, this is actually the wrong pin. This is off the older type Dewalt gun. The pin has a wee chamfered side. This goes toward the nails. The chamfer faces down. That slides in. Locates into position. Take this little wedge, put it back in. Now, to tighten this back down again bend this back into place just take a flat piece of steel I use a steel cold chisel press that there clamp that in the vise so the steel jaws of the vise come to about here clamp that good and tight and get a flat headed screwdriver like this old faithful weehaw and a hammer and beat Beat it down flat along this wedge. You're just bending that wedge back down and around again, and that'll hold the pin in place. If you're using a steel cold chisel and a vise to do this, make sure there's no oil on them. That has to be kept clean. Any of these guns you're working on, first fix or the second fix Dewalt's, these are oilless guns. Do not get any grease or oil near them. So if your vise is all dirty, Give it a clean first, or use a clean cloth or something. Do not get oil on them drivers, or they will stop working. They rely on friction, so oil will kill them. So that's how you change that, and that's how you place the driver. Now, the main thing is, does it work? That's her, ready to work. That's how you replace the driver assembly or pun on the Dewalt DCM 660 nail gun. If she breaks the pun, you can just replace the pun on its own. If she's just clicking instead of shooting, you can replace the whole driver. And if your old driver is badly worn, you might be better off replacing the whole driver assembly instead of just the pun. These are good enough guns, they do the work they're meant to do, but over the lifespan of the gun, they do require quite a bit of work. They don't, they don't have, they're not a serviceable gun, but parts do wear out and need to be replaced. Next up, pass load, AM360. This one customer says it shoots one or two nails and starts flashing the red light. That, I would imagine, is just dirty contacts. 
factory sometimes loses contact if the contacts and cells are dirty. Yeah. That's what you want. It should be up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Battery contacts are fine themselves. These are working fine. The contacts on here start to get bother. Well, the dirt inside your battery builds up too much. These prongs become dirty. It doesn't lose contact at all, so it starts flashing a red fault. Take the battery out, put it in again. Works, cut the nails. That was the same thing. Doesn't matter if you reset it, it still flashes red light. Clean the contacts 90% of the time fixes the problem. Next up, another pass load. This one's an IM65. Red light. I wish it works. Right, she does work and she does fire, but it's got a red light flashing. That's an odd one. Normally a red light, it don't fire at all. It's not coming out. Coffee battery. Sometimes they can be an awkward fit. Right, this one definitely needs a service anyway. Strip it down, I'll give it a service and see what's causing the red light. Definitely due service. It's not actually that bad. Are the things are oh, there we go. <laughs> I wonder if that might be it. That often you get that broken spark plug. I wonder if that's it. More like I wonder if I can get that out. Yeah, it'll go. There we go. It's going like plastic anyway. Place that spark plug. Is the spark unit still working? Let's try this again now. No, spark. She's still not happy. Spark shouldn't have to be connected up. For this to just start up. Yeah, restrict the red light still. So, 
probably going to be the spark unit then. Can't be the motor either because she doesn't start the motor until you plunge it. So it's not going to give you a false reading from the motor until it's running. Plus, if the motor's bad, it'll only give you a red light if there's a bad motor. That clearly works. Whatever the red light is, it still works. Where the other thing is going to be is the spark unit. You can get them faulty sometimes where the light puts half the current in for the motor or no current in for the motor. Electronics and this can give a wee bit of trouble sometimes. What you can do is replace it, 150 quid a time. Might not be worth it. As well run the thing till it fails completely. End of the day, gun still firing, just as a red light. We'll service this, get it ready to go. Is that too far as well? Service it, get it ready to go, get it back together. That's broken as well, that's spring. This one's okay. Right, everything else is okay. Clean this down. Nah. All cleaned out. There they go. New spark plug, new spring. And as well, that side of here. See this chamber's actually starting to degrade. She's on her last legs, this gun. Inside the chamber sometimes has a very thick tar buildup, burnt on residue. Actual kerosene I use in the parts washer. It does a good job of cleaning this, but it will not touch that old tar buildup. If you want to get rid of that there, get a bit of paint thinners, cellulose thinners, and a damper and a rag. I'd like to take that off, no problem. As are cleaned, ready to go. Now, just need to oil it, put it back together. Good drop on there. And a little on these steel rings. And make sure these rings are spaced out. One eighty to each other. Drop it on. All moving surfaces, a light coat of oil. This is just a dust shield for the back, just to stop dust getting them. Two springs in. Now 
do like to use a wee drop of Loctite just on these two screws. I do mean a drop, only a touch. that but now spark plug very rarely do you ever change these here I've only changed a handful of them in my whole time doing this why a lot of people come on looking for them they're gonna service their own gun on the spark plug it's not like a car engine that's firing the spark plug hundreds of times a minute this is only shooting the spark plug a few times a minute when you're running it hard doesn't need to be changed very often, only when the tip, very point, starts to round over. If it's still pointed, there's nothing wrong with it. red light will still be on on this. There's not much we can do about that until something else actually fails. Spark plug generally can fail and it's generally either going to stop the spark or stop the motor. Very odd time it can fail and just cause a small other problem like the motor continuing to run on or like this one red light coming on for no reason so even though it's on things still functioning fine Just change that as well because that's too slack. There's a wee stem adapter for the gas. If it's got a slack fit, gas can leak out and I'll not get the right air to gas mix inside the gun. Now for just a piece of plastic that these things are, actually quite expensive. Seven or eight euro just for that wee thing. don't need to coat these in oil just need to layer on there for initially running the gun it's the actual gas itself has oil on it and it slowly comes out along with the gas that's one of the reasons why these things need a service so often the oil builds up inside starts causing dirt to stick to it
obvious on password I am 65 service apart from that serviced cleaned out and a few parts replaced ready to go now, red lights the lawn motor runs bit smoky to start as she burns off some of the residual oil inside but working fine what is wrong with that battery just with problems with copy batteries you either get bad ones that aren't the correct ampage right power wrong amps or this one Here's the problem, she's just stuff as hell. That either don't stay on the gun and keep dropping out, or like this one, it's actually difficult to get out of the gun. So, the ones with the bad clips are the batteries that you want. The bad ones with the wrong amps are a waste of money. These ones might be difficult to get out, but at least they stay on the gun. You get other ones as well that go under the gun, but they don't hold very well and can drop out. You sure as hell don't want to be buying pass load batteries anymore because they're 120 quid. They're not worth it. Better off with the copy ones. Let's check that brand out there. Might be difficult to get out, but at least it locks on. Keita 9 inch grinder. And this one, I'm not even sure the model of this one. I don't think I've seen one of these before. Not with that door on it anyway. What's the problem? It's doing nothing. Not switching on at all. Simple one today. Just a set of brushes. Two one eights. This is an oddball machine. This is an oddball one. CB two oh eights. Do not have on stock. Never brought them on before. This is a new machine. Or a new design. It is a GA ninety sixty. Two thousand watt nine inch grinder. Supposedly more heavy duty. And by the looks of it, she is getting heavy duty work. Gonna have to wait for them to come on. Order a few sets. I'll be here hopefully tomorrow. This boy needs us today. I'm afraid it's not going to be ready. This will have to wait until the next day.